Avoid bad company. Obscene pictures, vulgar words, and novels which deal with love stories, excite passion and produce ignoble, mean, undesirable sentiments in the heart. Whereas, the sight of a good picture of Lord Krishna or Lord Rama or Lord Jesus, and hearing of the sublime songs of Surtas, Tulasidas and Thyagaraja, induce noble sentiments and sincere devotion in the heart, produce a divine thrill and tears of joy and prem, and elevate the mind to Bhava Samadhi instantaneously. Do you see clearly the difference now? What is the state of your mind when you attend a ball or notch party or when you read the mysteries of the court of London? What is your state of mind when you attend the Satsanga party of Swami Jaindrapuriji Maharaj of Benners, or when you are at Rishikesh on the banks of the Ganga in a secluded place, or when you study the soul elevating classical Upanishads? Compare and contrast your mental states. Remember, friend, that there is nothing so utterly ruinous to the soul as evil company. Aspirants should shun ruthlessly all sorts of evil company. They should not listen to the stories concerning women. The luxurious ways of rich persons, pungent food, vehicles, politics, silken clothing, flowers, scents and so on, because the mind gets easily excited. It will begin to imitate the ways of luxurious persons. Desires will crop up. Attachment will also come in. The cinema produces an evil tendency in man. He cannot remain even for a day without attending a show. His eyes want to see some half-nude pictures and some kinds of colors, and his ears want a little music. Young girls and boys become passionate when they see the actors in the films kissing and hugging. Those who want to develop themselves in the spiritual line should entirely shun the cinema. They should not attend even the so-called religious films. They are not really religious films. It is a kind of trick to attract people and collect money. What is the spiritual caliber of the actors there? Spiritual people only can bring out impressive stories with good morals that can elevate the minds of the spectators. Put an end to going to exciting films if you have got that habit. Do not witness vulgar sensuous scenes wherever it may be. Do not indulge in seeing naked pictures. All these tend to increase passion and deplete virya. You should strictly avoid these. Novel reading is another evil habit. Those who are in the habit of reading novels that deal with passion and love cannot remain even for a single second without novel reading. They always want their nerves to be tickled with some sensational feelings. Novel reading fills the mind with base, lustful thoughts and excites passion. It is a great enemy of peace. Many people have started circulating libraries for distribution of novels on a small subscription basis. They have not at all realized how much harm they are doing to the country. It is better they chalk out another vocation to eke out their livelihood. They spoil the minds of young men by the distribution of these worthless novels, which help to excite their passion. The whole atmosphere is polluted. Severe punishment is awaiting them in the Yamaloka. Do not read novels. They taint the mind. Novels are the chains of Western civilization to capture the victim unaware in its glittering fetters. Do not read those journals which excite your lower instincts. Immoral songs produce a very bad, deep impression in the mind. Aspirants should run away from places where vicious songs are sung. Strive your best to divert your mind and eyes from external objects that prompt sexual desires. Give up the sort of reading, conversation, imagination, and associations that are likely to stimulate the sexual desire. Do not converse with those who are eager to convey irritating news and disturb your mental poise. Live with spiritual advanced men and stop reading all books except those that are directly spiritual. When thoughts of lust arise in the mind, do not wrestle with them. The best method is to ignore them. If you are not successful in doing so, be in the company of someone who is superior to you spiritually who is more advanced than you spiritually. If you go into seclusion, the mind will chase you and down you in sensual thoughts. You will lose your balance. Be careful. The sensual thoughts will pass away with a little vigilance.